Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie The Old Guard, released in the year 2020. In the opening scene, four injured people lay on the ground after being ambushed by an army of soldiers. One of the injured people, named Andy, narrates that she is tired of this life because the group has been in the same situation thousands of times. The scene shifts to a few days earlier. Andy and her partner, Booker, are in Morocco to meet up with someone from the CIA. Andy sees a group of women taking pictures of each other. With the excuse of taking a group photo of them, Andy deletes the picture where her face was visible. It's clear that she wants her identity to stay hidden. In a hotel room, they meet the rest of the group, Joe and Nikki. The four reunite and talk about their work. They seem to work as a team to fulfill an unknown but important purpose. After a while, Booker and Andy go to the market to meet up with their next client, Copley. He is a former CIA agent and a humanitarian. He wants Andy and the team to rescue kidnapped children from South Sudan and arrest the terrorist responsible for doing so. The team has worked with Copley prior to the meeting, so they trust him. Although they have a rule to never work with the same employer twice, Andy accepts the deal because of the severity of the work. In the following scene, the team of four is flying to South Sudan. After landing in the desert, they notice some locals returning home with water. They seem calm for the people who've just been attacked, but the group doesn't think much of it. When it gets dark, Andy and the group attack the military base responsible for the kidnapping. In less than a minute, they ambush the soldiers guarding the base and enter the room that was supposed to be filled with the captured children. But a problem arises when they find a bunch of shoes in the room, but no children. They fear they might have been too late. Suddenly, a bright light flashes into their eyes, and an army of soldiers who had been ready for their arrival attacks them. The group realizes they've been set up by Copley, but it is too late because they're shot dead right after. As the soldiers turn around to leave, we see that the group's wounds are healing at an inhuman rate. They get better in no time and attack the soldiers back before killing all of them. Somewhere else, Copley is watching the commotion through CCTV footage. It is then revealed that Andy, Booker, Joe, and Nikki are centuries-old warriors with healing abilities. They have lived for hundreds of years dedicating their lives to better the lives of people who are in need. They use their vast experience to work as mercenaries, taking on missions that help people. They find out that Copley is trying to reveal their secret to the world, and work together to find and punish him. Somewhere in Afghanistan, a team of U.S. Marines is helping the locals. One of the soldiers, named Niall, is tasked to rescue women who have been held captive by a terrorist. She leads the team in the hideout and makes sure the kidnapped women are okay. When asked about the oppressor, a woman is brave enough to show them the way. Niall and her partners shoot the man and immediately go to help him. However, he repays their kindness by grabbing a knife and slashing Niall's throat. Her partner runs for her help, but the cut is too severe for her to survive. At the same time, the four assassins get the vision of Niall being killed. They have never seen or met her, and yet all of them had the same dream at the same time. This means she is the successor of the Immortals, born after 200 years since the last one. Since it is their duty to help Niall, Andy changes course and heads to find her while the rest of the group continues looking for Copley. Then we see that Niall's neck wound has completely healed without even leaving a scar. Her partners and superiors are surprised because of the unusual incident. Her friends stop talking to her, declaring her a freak. Meanwhile, in London, Copley attends a press conference held by his employer, Merrick. The man is a millionaire business mogul who wants to promote his company, Merrick Pharmaceuticals. Copley shows Merrick the footage of Andy and the group, showing him how fast they heal from injuries without medical care. Merrick is intrigued, but he needs physical proof for his experiments. He plans to capture the assassins to use them as an experiment and create something that will make humans immortal. His main aim is to make a lot of money out of the group's ability. At the Marine base, Niall is told she is to be sent to Germany for tests to figure out more about her healing ability. Some soldiers are about to take her when Andy intervenes and knocks them out before forcefully taking Niall with her. Niall tries to escape, which makes Andy shoot her in the head. When she gains consciousness, she finally registers that she is actually immortal. Andy makes her sit in the car, promising to tell her everything about her power. They make it to an airbase where a pilot takes them to France. During the flight, Niall finds out about the group who is immortal like herself. After talking for a while, Andy goes to sleep but finds her arms tied upon waking up. Niall is holding the pilot at gunpoint, asking him to land the plane immediately. 
To stop her, Andy shoots the pilot and orders Niall to free her so that she can fly the plane. The airplane starts going down, seconds away from crashing. Niall has to reluctantly let Andy free so she can fly the plane. But right after, Niall finds out the pilot is only pretending to be dead to help Andy. The girls get into a fight, but with centuries-long trained fighting skills, Andy subdues Niall easily. A few hours later, they land in France and meet the other guys. The immortals have dinner together for the first time. The group tells a fascinated Niall how they have lived through several historical events in their lives. It's also revealed that while their powers are absolute, there are chances that it stops working suddenly. This has happened in the past when their immortal friend lost his life after his wounds never healed. At night, Niall wakes up covered in sweat because of a nightmare. When asked what she saw, she reveals that she had a vision of a woman trapped in an iron coffin. The others are shocked to hear this because they know exactly who the woman is. Booker discloses she is their partner named Quinn, who was one of the first of the immortals. She and Andy were partners until they were captured because of their unique abilities. This was during the early modern period, so the people declared them witches and punished them. But no matter what method of punishment they used, the girls never died. Hence, Quinn was forced into an iron coffin and thrown into the sea where she has been trapped for the past 500 years. She is deep in the ocean, away from human civilization, where even the immortals cannot look for her. She has died and come back to life billions of times and is doomed to continue drowning. After listening to the story, Andy and Niall step outside the house. At the same time, the hideout is attacked by people sent by Merrick. In the following fight, Booker is wounded by a grenade which causes him to take longer to heal. Outside, Andy finds some of the men and kills them before she escapes with Niall and Booker. In the end, Joe and Nikki are captured and taken to Merrick and Copley. On the way, Nikki is still unconscious and shows no signs of healing. Joe worries about his friend, which makes the soldiers laugh. They ask him if they're a couple, to which Joe replies that they are more than lovers. Nikki comes back to life and the two kiss each other. A while later, they're shifted to an airplane and taken to a research center. Merrick is overjoyed to finally get the test subjects for his experiments. To make sure they're actually immortal, he stabs Joe repeatedly. Seconds later, the wound heals and surprises everyone. Merrick's primary researcher is especially excited to get to work with them. Somewhere else, Andy, Niall, and Booker reach a hidden cave that Andy is familiar with. While they rest, Andy realizes that her wound from the fight earlier has not healed yet. This means that she might be near death and her power is wearing off, but she doesn't tell the group about it. Meanwhile, the doctors in the lab retrieve Joe and Nikki's DNA, blood, and tissues. Since they have everything they need for the experiment, Copley requests Merrick to let the immortals go. However, after finally seeing that his dream might come true, Merrick doesn't want to back down. He refuses to let them go, declaring that they will always be under his authority. Copley doesn't like the idea, but he is in no position to argue with someone as powerful as Merrick. The following morning, Andy is outside the hideout with a picture of Niall's family. She is the only person who has a family out of the Immortals. Her mother and her little brother are her life, and after realizing she'll have to live most of her life without them, Niall doesn't want to be a part of the Immortals anymore. She backs out from the mission, but Andy understands. She lets Niall go before joining Booker to rescue the other two. After driving for a while, Niall finds a gun clip in the trunk of the car, realizing Booker intentionally gave Andy an empty gun. On finding out he must be working with Merrick, she returns to help Andy. Meanwhile, Andy and Booker track down Copley and are about to attack him. But seconds before, Booker reveals his alliance with Copley and shoots Andy in the back. He claims that he's tired of the immortal life and wants Merrick to find a way for them to die peacefully. His intentions were not bad, but he doesn't know that Andy might die because of him. Merrick and his men arrive at the house and take Andy away. Booker tries stopping them after noticing she isn't healing. However, he is knocked out in the process. Having had enough, Copley retaliates against Merrick but is knocked out as well. Booker and Andy are then taken to Joe and Nikki in the lab. After Joe and Nikki find out about Booker's deception, they turn on him as well. Meanwhile, Niall comes looking for the others and finds Copley in his house. On being urged, he reveals where the others are and is willing to help her rescue them. After a while, they secretly make it to Merrick's research building. Niall comes face to face with Merrick, but is too slow to shoot him dead. 
His men attack her, making her run to the room where the immortals are kept. She hands Andy a gun, determined to save everyone. Booker also joins hands with him, regretful of his actions. After being freed, the group steps out and kills all of Merrick's men. They also make sure Andy is not hurt in the process. Suddenly, Merrick finds Andy's special axe and decides to use it for his protection. Andy uses an axe she found in the emergency exit to kill more men and make her way to the antagonist. In the end, Niall and Andy come face to face with Merrick. He launches at Andy, but she jams her axe into his neck before he can. As he tries to shoot her, Niall tackles him out the window and they both land on a car. The crash causes Merrick's death while Niall is healed because of her power. The team then leaves together and Andy's wounds eventually heal. Booker is forced into a century-long exile as a punishment for his betrayal. He accepts his mistake and bids them farewell. Meanwhile, the rest of the group decides to continue working with Copley in turn for him to help them stay hidden. In the last scene, we see a lonely Booker return to his apartment in Paris. To his utter surprise, he finds Quinn waiting for him, having somehow escaped the ocean. That was all from the video, I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.